Welcome back everyone. Today's lesson is about rickets of vitamin D deficiency or nutritional rickets. Rickets is a disease of growing bone and it occurs in a children only before fusion of the epiphysis and it's due to unmineralized matrix at the growth plates. Whereas osteomalacia is present when there is inadequate mineralization of bone osteoids and it occurs in both children and adults. Vitamin D deficiency remains the most common cause of rickets globally. Uh, before going to uh, this case about vitamin D uh, deficiency due to nutritional problems, let us talk about vitamin D physiology. Uh, vitamin D can be synthesized in skin epithelial cells and therefore technically it's not a vitamin. Uh, cutaneous synthesis is normally the most important source of vitamin D and it depends on the conversion of 7-dihydrocholesterol uh, to vitamin D3 or 3-cholecalciferol by ultraviolet B or UVP radiation from the sun. The efficiency of this process is decreased by melanin. Therefore, more sun exposure is necessary for vitamin D deficiency uh, in a people with increased skin pigmentation. Measures to decrease sun exposure such as covering the skin with clothing or applying sunscreen also decreases vitamin D deficiency. Uh, children who spent less time outside have reduced vitamin D synthesis. There are few natural dietary sources of vitamin D. Uh, from this, fish liver oil have a high vitamin D content and fatty fish and egg yolks are other good dietary sources of vitamin D. Uh, most children in industrialized countries receive vitamin D via fortified foods, especially formula and the milk both of which contains around uh, 400 international units per liter, which is the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D. And some breakfast cereals and the breeds have also uh, vitamin D. Uh, supplemental vitamin D might be vitamin D2, which comes from plants or yeasts, or it might be uh, in the form of vitamin D3. Uh, breast milk has a low vitamin D content, approximately 12 to 16 international units per liter. Uh, so the daily recommended allowance of vitamin D is around 400 international units. Uh, it needs a huge amount of breast milk to get that recommended allowance because there is only 12 to 16 international units per liter of breast milk. So breast milk has inadequate vitamin D content. Vitamin D is transported bound to vitamin D binding protein to the liver where 25 hydroxylase converts vitamin D into 25 hydroxy vitamin D uh, which is the most abundant circulating form of vitamin D. And because there is little regulation of this liver hydroxylation steps, uh, measurement of 25-hydroxy vitamin D is the standard method for determining a uh, patient's vitamin D status. The final step is uh, inactivation of vitamin D occurs in the kidney, where the enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase adds the second hydroxyl group, resulting in 125-dihydroxy uh, vitamin D. Uh, the 1 alpha hydroxylase is upregulated by PTH or parathyroid hormone and hypophosphatemia, and it is inhibited by hyperphosphatemia and 125-hydroxy uh, vitamin D. Most 125-hydroxy vitamin D, or the most active form of vitamin D, circulates bound to vitamin D binding protein, and uh, it acts by binding to an intracellular receptor, and the complex affects gene expression by interacting with vitamin D response elements. In the intestine, this binding results in a marked increase in calcium absorption, which is highly dependent on uh, this active form of vitamin D. There is also an increase in phosphorus absorption, but this effect is less significant because most dietary phosphorus absorption is uh, vitamin D independent. 125-hydroxy uh, vitamin D, or the most active form of vitamin D, also acts uh, di directly on the bone, including mediating resorption and it directly suppresses PTH secretion by the parathyroid gland and uh, thus it compl uh, completes a negative feedback loop. PTH secretion is also suppressed by the increase in serum calcium mediated by 125-hydroxy vitamin D and this 125-hydroxy vitamin D inhibits its own synthesis in the kidney and increases the synthesis of uh, inactive metabolites. When we see the etiology of nutritional rickets, uh, nutritional vitamin D deficiency is due to uh, either inadequate direct sunlight exposure or inadequate intake of vitamin D, and also other risk factors include exposure to drugs that antagonize the effect of vitamin D uh, or that uh, inhibits the conversion of vitamin D. 
such as anticonvulsant drugs and also infant born from mothers with vitamin D deficiency, they might develop congenital rickettsias and also fast growing is also another risk factor for uh, nutritional vitamin D deficiency. Uh, when we see the clinical manifestation of rickettsias, uh, there are multiple clinical manifestations of rickettsias which varies based on the severity of the deficiency and also the, the duration of the deficiency. Uh, the earliest sign of rickettsias is craniotips. This is softening of the cranial bones and it can be detected by applying pressure as the occiput or over the parietal bones. Uh, rachitic rosary is also another clinical manifestation of rickettsias and this is the beads of rosary as the examiner's fingers move along the costochondral junctions. And the other is gross plate whitening, uh, which is responsible for the enlargement at the wrist and ankles. And Harrison's groove is also another most common manifestation of rickettsias, and it is horizontal depression along the lower anterior chest. Uh, additional manifestations include large anterior fontanelle, delayed closure of fontanelle, caput quadratum, pig and chest, bow leg or no knee, green stick fracture, rachitic dwarfism, hypotonia, sweating, and delayed tooth eruption. Uh, sweating is uh, most commonly seen in children with rickettsias due to the uh, bone pain that is present in uh, children with uh, vitamin D deficiency. Uh, when we see the laboratory finding or the lab laboratory investigation that we should have to send for a child with suspected nutritional rickettsias, uh, it includes uh, serum calcium level. Serum calcium can be normal during the earlier stage of rickettsias due to the uh, compensatory mechanisms by parathyroid hormone, and the latter it is expected to be low. And serum Phosphorus is low most of the time, and the serum alkaline phosphate is increased, and serum 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol, uh, which is the most abundant form of vitamin D in our body, is decreased. And the other is we should have to always determine serum PTH level. In case of nutritional rickettsias, uh, PTH is always uh, increased. The other thing that we should have to do is radiologic investigation. Uh, we should have to determine the uh, generalized density of the bone. Uh, normally, general decrease in skeletal radio density is expected and widening, capping, and fraying as the distal uh, of as the distal end of the bones best seen at the end of the radius and the ulna uh, is seen, and uh, we should have to take the wrist X-ray. Uh, as you see on the image, there is a widening of the growth plates and the capping and the fraying of the ulna and the radius at the wrist joint. Uh, the other issues about the treatment of nutritional rickettsias. Uh, nutritional rickettsias needs vitamin D administration and the vitamin D can be administered in the two forms. The first one is stose therapy. In the stose therapy, we give vitamin D uh, 300 to 600 international unit IM in two to four doses over one day. And the second form of vitamin D administration is a daily therapy or daily uh, administration of 2000 to 5000 international units of vitamin D for uh, four to six weeks. And during uh, vitamin D administration, we should have to also give uh, calcium and the phosphorus. And after treatment, daily recommended allowance of vitamin D, which is around 400 international units, should be uh, continued. Uh, regarding prognosis, most children with nutritional vitamin D deficiency have excellent response to treatment with radiologic healing occurring within a few months. So uh, we should have to repeat the wrist x-ray after, after uh, one to three months to see the response to treatment. And the biochemical uh, response is seen most of the time within uh, two to three weeks. And many of the bone malformation improved dramatically, but children with severe uh, disease might have a permanent deformities and a short stature. Otherwise, most of children with uh, rickettsias, especially due to nutritional rickettsias, if they are treated earlier, the response is so good. And rarely, patients benefit from orthopedic intervention for leg deformities, although this is generally not done until the metabolic bone disease has healed and there is clear evidence that the deformity will not resolve and the deformity is causing functional problem. So we should have to uh, make sure that metabolic bone disease is healed before uh, sending the patient for orthopedic intervention. Regarding prevention, most cases of nutritional rickettsias can be prevented by universal administration of daily vitamin uh, D intake of 200 to 400 international units of vitamin D to children who are breastfed and uh, for uh, others, uh, we should have to also expose the child to sunlight starting from the end of first month up to six months, uh, six months of age at which the child starts to eat uh, a diet to have a good vitamin D. Uh, the other issues about congenital vitamin D deficiency or congenital rickettsias. Uh, 
Normally, transplacental transport of vitamin D, mostly 25-hydroxy vitamin D, typically provides enough vitamin D for the first two months of life, unless the receiver maternal vitamin D deficiency. Uh, it occurs when the receiver maternal vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy. And the maternal risk factors include poor dietary intake of vitamin D, lack of adequate sun exposure, and the closely spaced pregnancies. Uh, this newborns can have symptomatic hypocalcemia, IGR and also decrease the bone ossification along with classic rachitic changes. Uh, Subtler maternal vitamin deficiency can have adverse effect on neonatal bone density and the birth weight. It causes a defect in dental enamel and the predisposing infants to uh, neonatal hypocalcemic tetany. Treatment of congenital rachitis includes vitamin D supplementation and the ad uh, adequate intake of calcium and the phosphorus. And the use of prenatal vitamins containing vitamin D. Uh, prevents this entity if the mother took it during pregnancy. Uh, this is all about nutritional rickettes and thank you for listening and also thank you for subscribing to the channel.